Hey guys, this video is about Raoult's Law. Raoult's Law deals with the vapor pressure lowering of a solvent in a solution where the solute is non-volatile. Now there's a lot of things going on here. Let's, let's make sure we understand it all. Um, first of all, a non-volatile solute means a solute that has no vapor pressure. There are no molecules or particles of that solute in the gas phase above the solution. For example, if we put sodium chloride into water and dissolved it, um, above that solution, there would be water molecules, and it would, that would cause it to have some vapor pressure. But there are no sodium chloride you know, formula units, or no sodium ions, or no chloride ions. They all stay in the solution. So that's a non-volatile solute. Um, and what happens is when we add a solute, a non-volatile solute, to a solvent, um, the vapor pressure above that solution goes down. And the reason for this is basically because once we add a solute, we're decreasing the surface area that the solvent has to, for the molecules to escape into the gas phase. Because on the surface of that solution, some of the, the surface area is taken up by the solute particles. So there are fewer um, solvent particles at the surface, which means fewer will be escaping into the gas phase. And that means a, a lower pressure. So this equation here is Raoult's Law, and this lets us calculate the vapor pressure above a solution with a non-volatile solute. And so this says that the vapor pressure above the solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent, not the solute, but the solvent, times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at that temperature. This superscript zero here, or O, this, this means we're talking about the vapor pressure that solvent would have if it did not have a solute in it at all at that temperature. Mole fraction, remember, okay, now watch out. This is solvent, not solute. So this mole fraction, remember, is the for the solvent would be moles of the solvent divided by the total moles in the solution, which would be the total, the denominator, would be the moles of the solvent plus moles of everything else that's in that solution. So this is Raoult's Law. Um, notice, by the way, this is the in the form of an equation of the straight line, y equals mx plus b. If we were to graph the vapor pressure of the solution versus the mole fraction of the solvent, we would get a straight line with the slope being the uh, vapor pressure of the pure solvent and the y-intercept being zero, it would be zero there. So vapor pressure lowering, which is what Raoult's Law describes, is what we call a colligative property, guys. Um, and a colligative property is one that whose value only depends upon how many solute particles there are and not on what they are, not on their identity, just how many particles there are, period. And what that means for us is if the solute is something that can dissociate into more than one particle, like an ionic compound, we have to take that into account. For example, if we took one mole of sodium chloride and put it into water, we would expect to get two moles of particles. We'd get one mole of sodium ions plus one mole of chloride ions is two moles of particles. Um, and we're going to, and it's not quite that straightforward, we're going to see when we talk about the Van't Hoff factor, but we'll get, get to that in just a minute. But first, let's talk about what an ideal solution is. Well, just like in the gas chapter, an ideal gas is one that obeys the ideal gas law, the kinetic molecular theory, an ideal solution is one that obeys Raoult's law. And if we were to graph, we just saw this an equation of the straight line, if we were to graph the vapor pressure above the solution, times uh, versus the mole fraction of the solvent, we would expect to get a straight line, just like this green one right here. Now, one of the underlying assumptions in Raoult's Law is that the strength of the interactions, the intermolecular forces between the solute particles and the solvent particles is exactly the same as the strength of the interaction, the intermolecular forces between the solvent particles with each other. So if there's sodium chloride in water, it's assumed, Raoult's Law assumes, that the strength of the attraction between the sodium ions and the water molecules and the chloride ions and the water molecules is exactly the same as the strength of the interaction between the water molecules for each other. If that's true, we have an ideal solution, and this graph is a straight line. Now, if the strength of the interaction between the solute particles and the solvent particles is weaker than the interaction between the solvent particles with each other, we get what's called a positive deviation from our Raoult's Law. And now the graph looks like this. It's concave down. On the other hand, if the strength of the interaction between the solute particles and the solvent particles is stronger than the solvent particles with each other, we get a negative deviation. It looks like this. 
So the Van't Hoff factor. So the Van't Hoff factor takes into account the fact that uh, most ionic compounds do not actually completely dissociate. In this table right here, the right-hand column, the red numbers, these are the Van't Hoff factor for these compounds. First thing, you guys do not have to memorize these numbers. If you need them, I'll give them to you. Um, just have to know that they exist and how to use them. So that what that means for us, okay, this is going to come into play when we are calculating the mole fraction. So we're using Rowlett's law. And we calculate the mole fraction of the solvent. The denominator includes the moles of the solvent plus all the moles of the total particles in that solution. So let's say we put one mole of sodium chloride into a solution. Well, we would expect two moles of particles, one mole of sodium and one mole of chloride, but we don't get that. We actually get 1.9 moles of particles. So that means that if we're dissolving one mole of sodium chloride in the solution in the denominator of the mole fraction of the solvent, we'd add the moles of the water plus 1.9 moles of solute particles. Um, so <clears throat> now, at this point, you're just given these. Once we get to the equilibrium chapter, um, we'll be able to actually calculate these because it ends up that the Van't Hoff factor is related in a fairly simple way to what's called the degree of dissociation, but um, that's later. So let's do an example. We want to calculate the vapor pressure of a solution, so we're going to use Rowlett's law. Um, we're assuming ideal behavior here, by the way. Um, that's made by dissolving 3.04 grams of potassium sulfate in 27.5 grams of water, 25 Celsius. And we're given the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, the water, um, at that temperature, 23.76 torr. So Rowlett's law, um, we need to know the, we're given the mole fraction of the solvent, the 23.76 torr. And all we need is the mole fraction of the solvent. Remember, the solvent is the water. So that's going to be the moles of the water, which we can get easily. Just take the mass divided by the molar mass, divided by the total moles of particles in the solution. So the denominator in that mole fraction is going to be the moles of water plus the moles of ions from the potassium sulfate. So, well, we can get moles of potassium sulfate by taking the mass and dividing by its molar mass. But then to get the moles of ions, we just take that the moles of potassium sulfate times its Van't Hoff factor. It says that there's 2.6 moles of ions in solution for every one mole of potassium sulfate we put in there. All right, so with that information, guys, why don't you go ahead and work this out and come on back when you get an answer. Hey, welcome back, guys. So, <clears throat> Rowlett's Law, um, vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Um, to get the mole fraction of the solvent, we need the moles of the solvent, which is water, divided by the total moles in the solution. Um, the moles of the solvent is just the mass of the water divided by its molar mass, and you know, about 1.53 moles or so. Now, to get the moles of everything else in there, all the solute particles, first we're going to find the moles of potassium sulfate. So we take the mass divided by the molar mass, and we have you know, 0 0.0174 moles of potassium sulfate, and then we multiply it by its Van't Hoff factor. We got this from that table. Right? And this says that there's 2.6 moles of ions for every one mole of potassium sulfate we put in the solution. And we see that gives us 0 0.04535 moles of ions. So now in the denominator of the mole fraction of the solvent, um, we have the moles of water, which is in the numerator also, plus total moles of ions, which we got right over here. And that gives us the mole fraction of the solvent is 0.971. And we can plug that into our Rowlett's law, multiplied by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, the water. And we see that the vapor pressure above that solution, assuming it's ideal, would be 23.1 torr. Now, if we have a solution that, um, where both components are volatile, then we can use a modified form of Rowlett's Law. And this says that the vapor pressure above the solution is equal to the mole fraction of the first component times the vapor pressure of the pure, that pure component at that temperature, plus the mole fraction of the second times its pure vapor pressure. And if we had a third, it'd be plus chi C, P C, and so on. Um, each of these terms, by the way, represents the pressure in that gaseous mixture above the solution of that one component. So <clears throat> there it is, modified form of Rowlett's Law. Let's use it in an example. So we have a, a solution that's a mixture of benzene, and we're given the vapor pressure of pure benzene, and toluene, we're given the vapor pressure of pure toluene, at 25 Celsius. Now we're given the mole fraction of benzene in the solution. Assume an ideal behavior, we want to calculate the mole fraction of toluene in the vapor above the solution. Now, we have to be real careful um, distinguishing between the solution and the vapor. 
we're, when we're in the vapor phase, we're, we're back in the gas chapter, okay? And um, so the mole fraction of toluene in the vapor phase is not going to be the same as it is in the solution. In the solution, it's easy. Um, we know there's two components. Um, the mole, we know the mole fraction of the benzene. Mole fraction of the toluene is just going to be 1 minus this. That's easy. But that's not what we're asked. We want the mole fraction of toluene in the vapor above the solution in the gas phase. Um, the other thing, guys, is we know that both of these components are volatile because we're given vapor pressures of both components. We're told pure benzene has a vapor pressure, so does pure toluene. If one of these was a non-volatile solute, it would not have a vapor pressure. Right, so what we're going to do is first we're going to use the modified form of Reynolds law. Um, we're going to get the total pressure above the solution. And then we're going to reach back into the gas chapter from Chem 101. And back then when we were talking about Dalton's law of partial pressures in the ideal gas law, we saw that in a gaseous mixture, that the partial pressure of one of the gases, in this case we care about toluene, is equal to the mole fraction of that, that gas, um, toluene, in this case, times the total pressure of the solution, uh, excuse me, of the gas. And so we're going to use that equation to solve for the mole fraction of the gas. So with that, why don't you guys work this out and come on back when you get an answer. Welcome back, guys. So first we're going to deal with the solution. We're going to use the modified form of Reynolds law. Um, the mole fraction of toluene is just 1 minus the mole fraction of benzene because there are only two components, right? The mole fractions have to add up to 1. So we get the mole fraction of toluene. We have the vapor pressure of each of the, the substances, so the mole fraction of benzene times the vapor pressure of pure benzene, which we were given in the problem, plus the mole fraction of toluene, we got that right here, times the vapor pressure of pure toluene. We were also given that up, um, in the problem. And so now we see that the total pressure above that solution is equal to about 449.7 torr. Now it's time for the gas, the gas law. So the partial pressure of a gas in a mixture is equal to the mole fraction of that gas in the mixture times the total pressure of that gas. This is what we want. This is what we were asked to find the, partial, the mole fraction rather of toluene in the mixture. Now the partial pressure of toluene is going to be just this term right here. This is the pressure in that mixture due to this component right here. So when we rearrange this equation, we get the mole fraction of the toluene is equal to the partial pressure of toluene over the total pressure. So the partial pressure of toluene, though, that's just this term right here, 0.649 times 290 torr. The total pressure, we calculated that, that's right here. And we see that the mole fraction of toluene above that solution is about 0.419. Now, notice, okay, the mole fraction of toluene in the solution was 0.649. It's less in the gas phase. And that's because the vapor pressure of toluene is less, quite a bit less, than benzene, which means that it's not going to contribute as much as it would as if it had as high a vapor pressure as benzene. That's all there is to it, guys.